Welcome to the Canadian SME Small Business Podcast. I am your host SK and we are back with another episode packed with insights and inspiration for the small business community. Today, we are delve into the transformative power of digital technology, the significance of unified business software and the paramount importance of data privacy and security in today's digital age. Joining us today is Chandra Shekhar LSP, the managing director of Zoho Canada a visionary with over two decades of experience at Zoho. Chandrasekhar's journey with Zoho has seen him at the heart of company's evolution, from software development within the web and MS division to playing a key role in pivotal moments of Zoho's growth. His passion lies in integrating technology seamlessly into business operations and advocating for Zoho's mission to provide innovative solutions that drive business success. Join us as we explore Chandrasekhar's insight into fostering digital transformation and securing business operations. Uh, good afternoon, Chandrasekhar LSP. Welcome to the Canadian SME Small Business Podcast. How are you today? Doing very well, SK. Thank you for having me on the show. It's always a pleasure to chat with you. Uh, uh, LSP, like from uh, software development to leading Zoho Canada, your journey is a testament to the impact of dedication and innovation in the tech industry. Uh, can you share more about your experiences have shaped your approach uh, to in leadership and technology integration? Well, uh, that's going to be a long story, SK. Mm -hmm. However, uh, I would say this. My work life essentially has been shaped by my tenure in Zoho. I started here back in 2001 as a software developer. And uh, it was, it still is a... It's has almost a very, 22 years. 23 years, 23 actually. 23 years. Uh, come, uh, you know. And when you look at this whole journey, it, it all is about the learnings that I had at Zoho. Uh, it kind of builds a sense of uh, entrepreneurial spirit within you. Back when I joined, we were about 250 people, 300 people, and it was a hustling and bustling startup. It still has that same vibe. However, um, even to this day, uh, what's been very uh, unique about Zoho is they allow you to take initiative. This is a company where people are allowed to make mistakes and learn from them. Nobody is scared to approach something that is new and have a go at it. If it fails, it's failed. It's a prototype. It's a proof of concept that we try to do as many times as possible and try to get to the outcomes that we want. And this has been something that's been instilled in me ever since my time back in 2001. So that whole idea that you can take initiative, that you can make mistakes and learn along the way and then don't repeat the same mistakes, obviously, these aspects of trying to learn these aspects of learning that were instilled in me has been a big part of who I am today and in terms of how I approach decision-making. ILSP, your journey eliminates the path of growth through continuous learning and adaptation, like embedding the spirit of innovation that drives Zoho. Now, let's discuss about the embracing digital transformation. Mm -hmm. Digital transformation is revolutionizing how businesses operate, mm -hmm. like offering new opportunities for growth and efficiency. In your view, like what are the key components of successful digital transformation for small businesses? And how does Zoho facilitate this journey? Okay. So when it comes to digital transformation, you know what, the first thing that I would uh, say, it's important to understand there is aspects of evolution and there are aspects of revolution. And you have to first understand what are the outcomes that you want to enable within your organization for any digital transformation exercise. Are you undertaking this exercise to improve processes and make it easier for your employees to be more productive and impact your business? Or are you focused on doing digital transformation for the customer touch points, be it sales or marketing or support. So the first thing that you need to understand is identify what is it that you want to impact or where is it that you need transformation to help you be better and bring in efficiencies and optimizations in your business. So let us say you want certain things with respect to uh, enhancing employee experience. So maybe it's about you probably need a better set of tools for collaboration and communication within the organization. And 
from a customer touch point perspective, maybe you have a great sales touch point. Maybe the marketing piece lacks something or your support piece lacks something. So identify where is it that you want to drive optimization. Once you identify, don't try to boil the ocean. Just take one or two pieces of each side of the story, the employee experience side or the customer experience piece, and try to see how you can enhance the processes using tools. Now, how can Zoho help? Obviously, given the fact that we have tools that spread across the entire spectrum, be it sales, marketing, finance, HR, support, we have it all. And the way we make it also available is very simple. You could basically start a la carte with one piece of uh, uh, solution that we offer, let's say maybe HR or CRM or the ticketing system. However, if you think you're going to go broader, then we give you different options in terms of the bundles that we make. So be the employee experience bundle that covers recruitment, uh, people management, payroll, and expense You can management. keep upgrading as needed. Exactly. Right. So it grows along with your business. We are not going to lock you into a platform when you don't need one. If you need one specific problem to solve, let's say you need a good CRM, we have it for you. If you just need something for recruitment, we just can give you that piece. Now, as an organization, as you grow, if you want to kind of uh, have an integrated uh, software across all the parts of your business, that's where tools like Zoho One comes, the bundle Zoho One comes into play, where you have everything in an integrated platform. So we really allow you to grow as you grow, and we give you different options. So it really comes down to the first important thing, like I said, is identifying where is it that you want to drive a change. And let's be like, how do you see digital transformation uh, evolving in the next few years? And what should businesses do to stay ahead? So as I was talking about, first is to identify where do you want to make an impact. Now, to stay ahead of the curve or even to kind of be digitally uh, driven organization, the first thing is you need to have your stakeholders buy in, your employees need to be comfortable with the fact that you're going to transform the way you're going to do business. So you have to, you cannot do enough and you cannot, I would even say over communication is not even a challenge because you have to talk to them and make sure that they understand the long game that you're into and how these transformation is going to impact their own uh, work life. So I think that is the most important thing when it comes to digital transformation. As far as the future is concerned, Yes, we are hearing a lot about AI. AI is going to become mainstream. Today, it's in a hype cycle. But there are going to be so many efficiencies that AI is going to bring in into the way uh, businesses are going to be doing uh, or using technology. Uh, it's going to be ground shaking. It is already ground shaking. We have seen the firmaments change uh, on a daily basis. With every day there is something on, let's say, marketing, you're looking at uh, video creation, content creation, when it comes to coding. You have AI tools that are writing software for you. So AI is impacting just about every part of what a business is doing from a technology perspective today. Um, but what will happen over the years is you're going to get to a point where AI can make all these beautiful suggestions. It can bring in a lot of efficiencies, but then a human has to still make the decision, yeah. right? So I would call that augmented intelligence. It's AI helping you with the information for you to make decisions better and faster and more effectively. So this is augmented intelligence, as I call it. And uh, what will also happen is AI is going to become so uh, pervasive that you're not even going to know that software is using AI under the hood. So when was the last time you thought about HTTP, right? Yeah. Nobody talks about it today. Right. The whole world runs on it. Right. So similarly, AI is going to be embedded across everything as far as digital tools are concerned. Yeah. As you rightly said, LSP, you know, like a lot of people are concerned, AI is going to take away this job. And after discussing with a lot of different industry experts, I believe like AI is going to help businesses exactly. and aid people with different tools, like, you know, efficient 100%. tools. Yeah. I totally agree with that assessment. And also uh, as uh, someone who has been involved in artificial intelligence in different forms. Generative AI is kind of in a hype cycle right now. Yeah. Uh, the world has seen AI in a lot of different uh, industries, be it healthcare, mm -hmm. be it uh, law, be it, uh, you know, uh, other, uh, you know, uh, a lot of industries, right? A lot of industries. Right. 
manufacturing, right. there's a lot of AI that is already being used, right? We call that traditional uh, AI. Right, but right. now what's kind of become the flavor of the season is Gen AI and how it's impacting everything. It is also yet another way of how AI can be implemented and be brought into uh, uh, into different aspects of uh, digital tools and so on. Right. Now, let's be like uh, coming to discussion of the importance of unified business uh, software, mm. uh, like uh, this solution to streamline uh, business operations and enhancing productivity and mm. improve decision making. Could you elaborate on the benefits of adapting a unified uh, software uh, approach and how Zoho suite of products supports businesses in achieving this integration? Okay. I want to give you an analogy. Do you want to buy a car that has the engine, transmission, and all the pieces put together? Or do you want to source an engine, a transmission, the chassis, and the uh, the body of the car and build one for yourself? A ready-to-drive car. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So the, the difference is in, in, when it comes to software, people talk of best of breed versus an integrated or unified approach. Now, the best of breed has a certain value. But then as you grow as a business, you cannot operate in silos. Not connecting sales operations and marketing operations, not connecting sales and marketing operations to finance operations, it is just going to get you to a point where your business is going to be functioning in silos. And that is the last thing that you want today, because only when systems can talk to each other, you are going to have efficiencies driven across all of these different areas of a business, sales, marketing, finance in the specific case. And then also, if data is being transmitted across these systems, over and about driving efficiencies, you can create these models of analysis where you can have a 360-degree view of what's happening in your business. Now, this is critical, especially for small and medium businesses, because the biggest differentiation is how fast can you get to insights and how fast can you get to uh, actions based on those insights is going to define your very existence. Right. Because large companies do this on a daily basis. So for you to differentiate yourself, having tools is one part of it. The other bigger piece is having integrated sets of tool is going to be a big differentiator because it allows you to have uh, unification of data across yeah. different parts of your business and also having a overview or a 360-degree view of what's happening in your business. So an integrated or unified software is what is going to drive the future of any business. Okay, thank you for sharing that with us. And what challenges do businesses face mm -hmm. in transitioning to unified business, uh, software systems, and how can they overcome these hurdles? First, biggest challenge that I see is if you already have a set of tools that you're using, migration comes in the way of adopting new software. Whether you move to another uh, standalone software, best of breed software, or a unified system, the challenge will be, hey, what can I? What do I do with my data? What do I do with my automation workflows that I've set in system A? How do I take it over to system B and so on? So um, when it comes to Zoho, we do have onboarding services as a part of when you sign up for our services. We give you the ability to uh, onboard to our systems. We tell you, we give you in some cases, we help you Migrating with the migration. The yes, we help you with the migration so that that is smooth. Uh, that is one of the migration tends to be one of the biggest challenges. And also, uh, you know, I would say there are certain systems that can be transitioned into a new uh, unified system, certain systems that cannot be. Let me tell you, typically anything that is customer facing, be it a help desk and ticketing system or a CRM system, you can change them. Whenever you think that, hey, the system is hitting a limit, I want to change something and you can go ahead and go for a new tool. But when it comes to tools like finance, mm -hmm. it's like doing brain surgery. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to go and touch the brain and do something. So those kind of transitions have to, you have to give it the time. You have to make sure that everything that you're doing from a business perspective and those finance tools or those kind of tools that are very critical, the mission critical systems as I would call it, you have to bide your time and make a, take a phased approach 
to transition them over. So I would say uh, migration and then figuring out what are the mission critical systems, what are the areas where you can start integrating. Again, I think the biggest value that people will find is connecting sales and marketing in any organization. If I if I, if the sales team knows what the marketing team is doing and the marketing team knows understands what's happening with their campaign, mm -hmm. listen, that's like a big benefit right, right there. So. It, Connecting those dots and also what about connecting support? So anything customer facing, the, the transition seems to be more straightforward no. as opposed to operational tools like HR systems and finance systems. Those transitions or migrations are always going to be uh, something that are going to be, I would say, difficult. And time consuming. And time consuming because you don't want to fix what's not broken. Right. It's it's a term that, right? Yeah. So that's what it is. Yeah. Uh, adopting a unified business software is a strategic move that can significantly impact a business efficiency and scalability. Now let's uh, discuss about uh, like navigating data, privacy and security. Mm -hmm. In an era, LSP, where data breaches are com uh, like commonplace, mm -hmm. Prioritizing data privacy and security is more important than 100%. ever. What are the best practices for small businesses uh, to ensure their data privacy and security, especially when under, uh, like undergoing digital transformation? Okay. Now, Zoho has a very strong opinion as far as privacy and security is concerned, SK, and we have talked a lot about this in the past as well. A lot of SaaS tools out there are essentially surveillance tools. Right. They are more interested in trying to find out what you're doing and do ads and sell your information and make money rather than giving you a software that allows you to do the work that you want to do with it, right? Why should a CRM system that you're logging into for work track what you're looking at in the next tab? Maybe you're shopping for a car. Maybe you're shopping for a ticket to go somewhere. Why is your information being passed by these uh, CRM tools to advertisers? So. I would say if you're evaluating any tool, look at the privacy terms and conditions. What are they going to do with your data? That's very now, important. what is also happening is you've seen a lot of publication sites have come up and say are telling uh, crawlers to stop crawling their sites to understand uh, or learn information to even train AI systems. Right. We have been seeing these kind of conversations becoming mainstream these days. Right. And now we as humans put so much information into these softwares, they make a product out of us. And I think we have to take a stand and look for vendors who respect your privacy. That's very important. And who take care of your security. When it comes to Zoho, when we started the business, the cloud business in 2005, it's written in our constitution that we will not do ads right? And we will not sell our customers information. Now, it requires conviction. A company that takes a stand like this, it's going to take time for the impact that they are going to create from, a, from all these philosophical aspects right. of doing business. Right. It's easy to be a multi-billion dollar company versus taking the time that we took to become a billion dollar company. We're going to become a multi-billion dollar company Five years into right. starting the right. cloud business saying, hey, we're going to do ads, we're going to sell your information. Versus the conviction and what we wrote down in the constitution, it's the guiding light for us. So much that we now have data centers spread across the globe. We launched our data center here in Canada, SK, you know, as uh, recently as in November 2023. Yeah. So we now are storing all our Canadian customers' information here, exactly. here yeah. in Canada. Yeah in Montreal and Toronto. And it is just not storage of data. We are even processing your data here, right? So look for vendors who are not just keeping a copy of your data in Canada to dot some I's and cross some T's. Look for people, look for vendors who have local data centers, look for people who are gonna respect your data sovereignty, your data residency requirements, because very soon the government is gonna come up because not just very soon, there's a lot of conversation about it's GDPR on, yeah. or, or such regulations coming into other countries as well. Canada is not far behind. Right. So look for people who will keep you, who, who give you, who proof you for the future. Right. right? So future proofing your business, look for vendors who have, who, got, who have your back when it comes to data residency, data sovereignty, privacy, 
and security. That's very important. Uh, let's be your insights into data privacy and security highlights the critical balance between innovation and safeguarding digital assets. Now let's discuss about Zoholix 2024. Mm -hmm. Zoholix, like uh, Zoho's annual uh, user conference, stands as a beacon for innovation, collaboration and growth, offering uh, the attendees a unique opportunity to dive deep into Zoho's ecosystem. Uh, let's be Zoholix 2024 uh, is on the horizon like, yes. and it promises to be an exciting event for Zoho users and enthusiast can you share what attendees can expect from this year's conference and how it aims to help small businesses advance with zoho's applications sure so this year we're going to do the zoholics conference in montreal on the 8th and 9th of october we'll be making the announcement shortly as well and we'll start uh you know uh putting the promotions out there sk in terms of what zoholics does it brings together people who are new to the Zoho ecosystem and people who have been using Zoho tools over the years. It gives them the opportunity to first network and pe meet people from adjacent industries or similar industries and understand how Zoho is helping them with their digital transformation journey. It also gives them deeper understanding and time with product experts from Zoho who will talk and educate anybody who wants to know more about Zoho in terms of the product details or implementation details and so on. So we have these one-on-ones, as we call it, where they'll have one-on-one -on -one time with the product experts. They will also have the opportunity to explore the, uh, the experience center, as we call it, where we have different product experts who are available for, for them to go and talk about uh, specific. Maybe they're planning something in future. They want to understand how they can enhance their marketing journeys. So you'll have experts from the marketing team. Uh, if someone is interested in, let's say, IoT platform, then they may want to go and talk to our IoT experts. So we assemble a lot of experts from Zoho, and we also have our prospects, customers, and also an integral part of this Zoholic show, our implementation partners here in Canada, who can help you implement the Zoho solution. So uh, that is the mother of all events as far as uh, Zoho is concerned, Zoholix Canada in Montreal, uh, October 8th and 9th okay. is going to be the event. Okay, LSP, before we conclude, like, you know, what is your key piece of advice to small businesses uh, when it comes to digital transformation? I'll go back to my, uh, one of my first responses that I've given you, SK. Uh, digital transformation is an evolution. Look at places where you need optimization. Look for modern tools that can help you to get there because just trying to have a tool is not going to solve the problem. A tool is only a means to an end, right? What are your end goals? Capture that first and then look at vendors, then look at tools that can help you to get there. And then there may probably be 10 steps. You can't take all 10 steps at one time. Maybe there are three steps that you can take, measure the outcome and see if you want to go to the fourth to 10 steps, so on. So it is an evolution. It's a, it's a one step at a time. But again, when done right, it's going to have a short-term, mid-term, and long-term impact on how your business runs. Uh, thank you, LSP, for sharing your advice with uh, our audience and listeners, especially the small business owners. And like, what is the easiest way for our listeners or the small business owners uh, to learn more about Zoho products? So just going to www.zoho.com is where you're going to get into the Zoho universe. You can understand every tool that we have and what are the ways in which we offer these tools, either as a, a la carte solution or bundles that can help you to connect different parts of your business, sales, marketing, and support, call it the uh, you know customer experience bundle, the employee experience bundle, and the mother of all, Zoho One, which includes all the 55 plus applications that we make and, uh, you know, and that way you can have a unified operating system for your business. Uh, thank you so much, LSP, for sharing your insights and experiences with our uh, audience today. It was a great pleasure hosting you. Thank you very much, SK, for having me once again. Thank you. Thank you. A special thanks to our partners, exclusive banking partner, RBC, exclusive shipping partner, UPS, exclusive accounting software partner, Zero, and our exclusive email partner, Constant Contact, for their unwavering support. Their support enables us to bring these important conversations to the forefront, helping small businesses across Canada navigate the challenges and opportunities of today's digital landscape. Remember, the path to digital excellence is ongoing, and staying informed and adaptable is key to navigating it successfully. Don't forget to subscribe to Canadian SME Small Business Magazine by visiting our official website, 
कैनेडियन एस एम ई डॉट सी ए फॉर मोर एनलाइटिंग स्टोरीज रिसोर्सेस एंड टिप्स डिजाइन टू एम्पावर यू एंड यूर बिजनेस अंटिल नेक्स्ट टाइम कीप पुशिंग फॉरवर्ड स्टे रेजिलियंट एंड कंटिन्यू टू चैम्पियन दी स्मॉल बिजनेस कम्युनिटी